his chest requires about two mLs of serum. And I'm going to pull a full two cc's of blood. I'm going to hold back there. I'm going to go ahead and take my tube. Go ahead and insert. And then I'll let it go ahead and go into on its own since it is a vacuum chamber too. Um, that way it decreases hemolysis. And then we're going to let it sit um, for about 10 minutes to clot and then we'll spit it. I'm also going to go ahead and label this um, with our name and our account number and the date. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to put in the centrifuge. Um, I've already got a balance in here that's equal to this two here. So I'm going to go ahead and put it in there. And then I'm going to get a timer and set it 10 minutes. Go ahead and start it. Start the centrifuge, and then uh, we'll wait for the timer to go off, and then we'll stop it. Now that our timer has gone off, I'm gonna go ahead and use some tweezers to pull it out of the centrifuge, and then we'll go ahead and we'll place it in a labeled bag. I've already got the bag prepared. It's got the requisition in it. And we'll go ahead and place the sample in the bag, making sure that the name matches what's on the requisition. And then we're going to take it and we will put it in the refrigerator until um, the lab comes to pick it up later this afternoon. We'll go ahead and get a sample ready, about the sample ready to send out to the lab. Um, we're going to make sure we have adequate um, paper towels. And we're going to take wrap around the sample. The sample is labeled, it's got all the information on it, where it came from, patient that it's going to. Um, we want to make sure that it matches the requisition that we have over here, which it does. So we're going to go ahead and take this, wrap it in plenty of paper towels and stick it inside the baggie just in case. There's any stone. I'm going to make sure that it gets absorbed. Um, it is sitting in formalin, so make sure we get the bag up really well. And we're going to stick it in the box. I'm going to put a couple extra paper towels in there just for stableness. And then we're also going to get an ice pack. I'm going to do the same thing, wrap it in some paper towels, put it in a bag, this way it some sit that in there. Make sure our position goes in here. We'll go ahead and tape up the box. And I've already got my label printed out. So we'll go ahead and add that to the top here. Stick it in an envelope here in just a little bit and then we'll send it off um, to the lab um, and then we'll get the results in later. I'm going to demonstrate how to do some maintenance on the Snap Pro. Um, I'm going to go ahead and we're going to turn it off. I've got it unplugged. Alright. 
I'll turn it over and unlock the bottom part here. Lift it up. And basically what we're going to do is we're going to check back here. I'm going to make sure that all this area is clean of blood. As you can see, there's some blood kind of caked up there from when the test snapped. Sometimes there's um, extra blood or blood and um, conjugate in the well, so it kind of snaps up to the top. So we want to make sure that's all clean. Sometimes it can... If it builds up too much, it can drop down into the well and then we can get contaminated. Tests and incorrect results. Make sure everything in here is just clean. We'll go ahead and turn that over. And I'm going to look at this part here. I'm going to flip it over. Make sure that this area is also clean of blood. I'm just using some alcohol um, on some Q-tips to make sure everything is clean. Make sure everything functions well, nothing sticks, um, everything moves pretty freely. I'm going to go ahead and stick this back in here. And put it back together. Again, make sure that it moves freely here. We don't want anything to be in the way. We want to make sure that everything is clean here. Some dust back here. We don't want that to get into any of the plug-in areas. So we'll go ahead and clean this off. And we want to make sure that the screen is clean as well. Um, we don't want to mess up any of the the calibration when it comes to um, pushing the buttons on there we want to make sure that what we're touching is actually what's getting pushed as opposed to maybe touching down here and actually hitting something up here so it helps to keep the screen clean and um, keeps us from having to recalibrate the screen as often so we'll let this turn back on make sure that the internet signal is good and then we'll um, also make sure that the battery status is good. Since it's been plugged in, it should be fully charged, um, which it is. So we've got that there. Green light. The screen is clear, so we don't have any pending heartworm tests um, or any combo tests at all, um, which is important to know. Sometimes it doesn't always get deleted um, in, the com in this machine, even if it gets put in the computer. So we want to make sure that that's clear just to keep it from getting built up. And then, uh, that's about it. I'm going to go ahead and run this combo test. And what we do is take the conjugate and the blood already mixed into it. And place it in the well here. And then we'll put a snap here so we'll just look at the patient's name. Take it and heat fix it real quick. Make sure it gets rolled on there really good. I'm going to go ahead and heat fix it with the lighter, just kind of a few quick rubs on the heat. We're going to take a chem wipe and just wipe off the blackened portion on the bottom. I'm going to take it and we're going to dip it in the dip quick stain.
lights it off. It's nice and dry, so we're going to go ahead and take some oil, just put a drop on there, and we'll go to, go to the immersion oil, the 100. Lens just to make sure that we can get as close as we can. All right, now what I'm looking for is any bacteria. Yeast, um, bacteria being either cocci or rot. Um, and right now, not really seeing either. I suspect that this kitty might have a food allergy. Um, he doesn't have a whole lot of discharge under the ears, but he's just scratching at him. Um, but I do see a little bit of cocci. Um, so far, I'm not seeing any yeast. Sometimes we'll see budding yeast. Um, so far, I'm not seeing any of that. That's about all you look for um, on an ear slide. Okay, so we're about to do a necropsy on this um, this kitty right here. We've got ahead, um, gone ahead and gotten our wet table um, all set up. Um, we've got our instruments kind of in a cold pack just so that we can use them as we need them. Um, we've got a couple pair of scissors, um, mayo and medicine bombs. Um, blade holder, uh, needle driver for when we're done. Um, also got a few different sized containers of formalin. Um, so that when we take our tissue samples, um, we can put them in there and um, put them in appropriately based on the size and the amount of formalin um, in the jar. Also has some suture. Um, we've got some blades, and then these are for cutting through um, some bone so that we can get into the chest cavity. As far as personal protection, um, I have on a cap, and I also have on a mask. I also have a gown, and then I'm also gloves. So that, um, and as is the doctor, she is also appropriately clothed so that we can go ahead and do this necropsy um, so that we are remaining safe um, at this point just because we don't know much of the history on this cat. Okay, we're good. Okay, so we have this kitty. Um, Jessica's already shaved and has her prepared for the necropsy. Um, this animal was actually obtained um, from our local shelter. Um, so we don't, all we know is that she was a feral, a feral kitty. Um, and just on a gross inspection of her skin, um, we can see that her teats are engorged um, and she does have some milk that is coming from them. So um, I suspect that she is, had a recent, a recent litter um, or is currently pregnant. Um, just palpating and kind of feeling inside of her abdomen, her intestinal loop feel very thickened, um, very, very thickened and, and ropey. So we we'll definitely want to pay attention to that when we get inside. Um, you can actually see this kind of poking through right here, um, and that is actually um, lymph node, and then this right here is actually a piece of intestine that we can actually visibly see through her abdominal wall, that's how thick it is. Okay, 
So um, I'm going to ask Jessica to hand me a blade. Um, with most knee propsies, we tend to start in the chest cavity first. Um, and, and of course, where, where and what we're looking for kind of depends on the history of an animal. If, if this animal had presented um, that, particularly with a cat, that the owner had just found that he uh, just or she just passed away and they don't know why, we definitely would want to start with the chest uh, to look for heartworms, um, which is a very common um, presentation in a cat that we just find suddenly death, or heart disease in general. So um, Jessica's getting me a blade together. right over the top of the chest here. I'm just going to go ahead and extend, extend my skin incision all the way down the abdomen. Of course, we've got to have a little bit of milk in our way there. Okay, now you can see we're actually down to um, the rib area. Um, if you will hand me those um, bone covers, I'm going to just start by making a little stab incision to kind of get us started. I'm going to use these to just kind of cut through the ribs. some of that muscle. I'm just going to kind of cut right along the sternum. It's a little easier to get through them. going to do to start is just to kind of take a, um, a peek in there and we can actually see the heart. Um, the lungs, you want to look at them, visually inspect them, check their color. Um, they actually appear normal for a post-mortem, very smooth. The heart is a normal, normal size and shape. Ordinarily, if we were suspicious of anything with this cat, as far as the heart is concerned, we would actually incise the inside, um, looking for evidence of heartworms, or uh, more importantly, really to look at ev for evidence of um, right ventricular, or excuse me, left ventricular hypertrophy in the case of hypertrophic cardiomyopathy, which is common in, in cats. Um, and, and truthfully, with heartworm disease we, in cats, we probably would be paying more attention to the lungs to see if there were any changes there. Um, we can actually see the diaphragm, this thin sheet here, and that all looks good. So we're gonna go ahead and incise into the abdomen at this point. Based on what I'm feeling um, in her abdomen, I think we're gonna you know, find some things going on there potentially. So again, the first thing we're going to do is just kind of peek at everything in there and see how things are looking. You know, is there any evidence of fluid? Um, we can see the liver here, um, which appears normal. And, and not only do we look at it as far as how it feels, but uh, or excuse me, how it looks, but we also want to touch it and see how how does it feel? Um, does it feel you know normal? Is it hard? Uh, but it's nice and smooth. Um, we look down, we can definitely see that her kidney there, the right kidney, left kidney. Um, and 
her reproductive tract, um, which actually looks fairly, fairly small. She may have been experiencing a, um, a pseudo pregnancy, a false pregnancy. Intestinal loops definitely very, very thickened. And we'll go back and then take a look at the stomach um, and kind of feel, kind of feel the contents there. If this were an animal that, um, if this were an animal that the owner suspected some type of uh, poisoning or toxin ingestion. Um, we would definitely look at the, the liver. We'd probably look at, open the stomach and check the contents. And then from that point, we just basically run the bowel and, and go the whole length of the bowel, you know, looking for um, abnormalities along the way. The entire intestinal tract feels very thickened um, to me. Um, this patient has uh, been deceased for a few hours, so this may be a, um, a post-mortem finding um, there. One thing that we'll say is, okay, and here's her spleen. I was like, where is the spleen? It was kind of tucked under the stomach there. Uh, very small, uh, which is normal uh, for, for a cat, and um, smooth, no lumps or bumps. Uh, the pancreas, which is running along the intestinal tract here, um, there are some little mottled areas inside of the pancreas, so that may be a good place for, um, you know, for us to take, to take a sample. Um, that could be a normal finding, um, but we'll submit that for histopathology in order to, to be able to tell. So what we're going to do is I'm actually going to uh, take a piece of the tissue and then um, have Jessica place it in our formalin container. And I'm going to try to, to get a piece here that is representative with those little whitish dots there. And I'll use my forceps to. Okay. And then when we're done, we'll appropriately label that as pancreas. Pancreas. And now we're, now we're going to actually look, since these intestinal loops feel so thickened, um, we'll actually um, get a piece of small intestine here. Which might actually cause us to have some oozing, of course. And I'm actually going to open the lumen just to kind of take a look on the inside. Okay. And I'm going to actually use my forceps to drop it into the formula. And I may just go take another piece of small intestine um, from further down. So there's the cecum just working back. We'll get a piece of ileum here. to have a representative piece from a couple of areas within the intestinal tract. Urinary bladder looks fine. Kidneys appear healthy. gallbladder. Kind of forgot to take a look at him when we were up there, but he's, um, gallbladder is actually small, um, not full, no problems there. It does feel like there's a good bit of food in the stomach, but nothing hard or firm. Okay. So now um, we're just going to replace the abdominal contents, and um, we are going to close close the defect um, before um, uh, sending the kitty to to be cremated. As far as necropsies go, um, if we had been um, concerned about rabies, uh, we would have wanted um, only 
vaccinated individuals to be working on the animal as well as um, any uh, personal protection we would have wanted to double up on. Um, so double gloves um, and then just dispose of any um, gowns. So wearing disposable gowns instead of washing them. Um, those are the precautions that we wanted, would have wanted to have taken um, if we had been suspicious of rabies. As far as testing for rabies in our particular county, um, the shelter prefers to um, cut the cut the head off for uh, sending to send off for analysis. Um, but we um, could do potentially could do that. Um, the county here just prefers to uh, go ahead and and send the or go ahead and cut it off themselves, um, since they are fully equipped. Um, and everyone at the shelter th there um, is is vaccinated um, so that they don't have to worry about the um, the risks of uh, contamination. I'm going to do a quick vaginal cytology on this um, disco right here. We're going to put a little bit of uh, saline on this. This is a sterile um, cotton swab. I'm going to part the hair, and we're going to kind of just go in. Just kind of very gently. Make sure we get all around in there. I'm going to come back out and we're going to just roll again roll very gently make sure we get this on the tip of the cotton swab as well then we'll let this dry once it dries we'll go ahead and stain it and we'll look at it under the microscope so this is our uh, vaginal smear, which is in plenty of time to dry. Um, we're not going to heat fix it. Um, we're just going to go ahead and stain it in the clean stain. And we'll do about 10 dips in each stain to fix it onto the slide. off the back end of it. And we'll take a candle light and draw the back end kind of the tip. And then we'll let it air dry. And then we'll look at it under the microscope. And okay, now that the slide is dry, I'm going to go ahead and take a look. Um, we're going to start with the 40 and see if we can find a grouping of cells. Here first. And then we'll, there we go. Let's see if I can find a good group of stain, which is right here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to take a little bit of oil. Put a drop right in the center. take a look and see what we see. This was on a dog that's been spayed for a while, um, so should expect to see just really some epithelial cells, um, which is really all I've seen so far. Um, 
a random yeast. Um, not even seeing a white blood cell. Some keratinized ep epithelial cells, and it's really about all I'm seeing. Um, which is perfectly normal for a spayed female dog. Um, so it's normal that it's not too terribly exciting of a cytology. Alright, so I've got my two samples here. The recipient and the donor. Um, so right now I'm waiting for the blood to clot out so that I can spin the samples. Now that I've centrifuged the samples, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to start with the donor and I'm going to take the plasma. So the next step is going to be to wash um, the blood left in the EDT to so I've got um, two more little pie cuts that I'm going to use. I'm going to put them in um, disposable test tube. I've got them labeled. Um, this is the recipient Nova here, um, and then I've got the Donna Luna here. I'm going to go ahead and um, start with one to two drops of blood in here. Make sure the names match before I go ahead and, and do this. Um, I'm going to go ahead and take the top off. Careful not to get either of these 
contaminated. So I've already got the tubes with saline, I've already got some from over here. Wash off the top, the super and then we'll do it again. So we're going to pull those Same thing again. Um, each one. And the centrifuge them again. Okay, so this is the second time we've been centrifuged, so we'll go ahead and pull off super and Okay, so 
go ahead and fill one of those up again. And this will be the last time that we wash them. Wash number three, set them back in here for a minute. Okay, so we'll go ahead and take them out. And it's definitely colorless. There's no, no color to the supernatant. It's very clear. So we'll go ahead and pipe that out. The super neatens on top, and then we'll have just the washed red blood cells on the bottom. And be careful not to disturb the red blood cells that are sitting on the bottom. Just some red blood cells sitting here. So we've got those there. I'm put them right there, and then I'm going to use this new tube. Pull out my other sample. Which is the donor. And do the same thing.
going to Two new samples here. I've washed red blood cells with the saline. We're going to move on to our next step. So I've got two new um, labeled test tubes, and I've got my, my serum here, and I've got my washed red blood cells here. So I'm going to go ahead and in the first test tube, I'm going to to sit right here, and I'm going to open, I've got written on there, um, I'm going to take two drops of the recipient serum, I'm going to make sure that that's exactly what I'm grabbing, I'm going to top off of that, and this should be the wash of the donor, which is correct. Take two drops of each and we're going to put it into that first. Recipient serum and the donor's um, cell wash in here. And I'm going to do kind of the opposite um, in this test tube here. Take two drops of the donor's serum and then two drops of the recipient's cell wash. Um, or wash for blood cells. There, so I don't get them confused. I'm going to take this. down to the bottom. Alright. I'm going to kind of switch them around to mix them a little bit. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and set up controls. Um, I'm going to take Go ahead and do the donor's control first, which is this two here. Here. This is indeed the donor. Two drops. Two 
photographs of the daughter's red blood cell, which is indeed what this is. Same thing. Checking to make sure this is the recipient before I drop the cells in there. Okay, so I've got my controls here next to each other, and then I've also got my actual testing tubes over here. At this point, I'm going to take all of the tubes, I'm going to kind of gently shake them, just to kind of mix them a little bit, and then I'm going to let them sit here at room temperature, um, for about 30 minutes, and then once we come back, we'll um, examine them for some hemolysis after we centrifuge them. And so we're going to go ahead and centrifuge um, all four tubes that are in there um, for a minute. So looking at the controls, um, trying to get the... Um, there's really no hemolysis, it's hard to get the camera to focus, but... Um, there's no hemolysis in this control, which is the recipient. And then in this control here for the donor again, um, it's really the reflection off the red blood cells that's making it look pink. Um, so the test went well. Um, and then as far as um, the hemolysis, there's, and this is the donor serum, and um, the recipient cells. Um, it does look like there is some agglutination in there. Um, again, I can't get the camera to focus very well. Um, and then, so tech, theoretically we should see the same thing in the other tube after kind of mixing it up a little bit with the finger. There's definitely um, some agglutination there. Um, and they're kind of clustered around. Um, so So because of the agglutination that is in here, it is pretty significant. Um, they would not be um, compatible as far as um, donor recipient, um, and we would need to select a different donor um, to see if it would be compatible. All right, we're gonna go ahead and do a skin scraping on this dog. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and just shave a little area right here. Um, just so I can get a clean scraping without a whole bunch of hair included. Um, you can see these and kind of shave a little spot. And then I don't want to take anything and clean the area. Um, because then I'm maybe getting rid of some type of um, 
organizing that I need to be catching. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to take my have a slide here. Um, it's a mineral oil. I'm going to take my blade and I'm just going to kind of kind of dab it in there just a little bit. And I'm going to take this and I'm going to go kind of in a perpendicular fashion to the skin. And I'm going to kind of just scrape. Careful not to make an actual decision. And since you're just looking for mites, I'm just going to scrape until I see some of the capillary beds kind of appear. And I'm starting to see some. I got a good sample just like that. I'm going to go ahead and take it on this slide. And I'm going to go ahead and get it on there. And go ahead and kind of spread it out a little bit so there's not huge chunks to, to look at. Um, that way it is prepared to look at it under the microscope and what we'll do is we'll look for any mites um, or any organisms that um, should not um, be there um, including mange which could be both demodex or um, sarcoptic mange. I guess we're going to go ahead and evaluate our skin scraping. Um, I'm going to start on our Lens. Just gonna take a look around and see. Um, Diamidex is gonna be kind of um, almost almost tick looking, um, and then the uh, Arthur the sarcoptic mage is almost tick looking. Uh, the Diamidex is almost a uh, um, almost a caterpillar um, type thing. Um, at this power, we're not we're not gonna really see a good evaluation of yeast and bacteria. We'll go up one more here in just a minute. Um, right now, I'm just seeing blood cells and um, kind of some points of hair. Um, nothing else of significance. Forty lens. Again, there's going to be a normal flora of bacteria and yeast, um, but if we were to see an overwhelming amount, um, then that would you know, indicate um, that we would have a problem, some type of infection that we would need to address. Um, but other than that, um, the skin scraping appears perfectly normal, um, and the dog is not um, symptomatic, not really itchy or anything. Um, so we'll go ahead and just um, continue. Um, or, you know, there's no treatment needed, so um, that's, that's about it. Take this off. We'll make sure, just in case, and the oil box <clears throat> on the microscope, we're going to clean this, and I'm going to make sure that I go ahead and wipe the lens as well um, with the chem wipe, just to make sure. As far as testing for rabies in our particular county, um, the shelter prefers to um, cut, the, cut the head off for uh, sending, to send off for analysis. Um, but we, um, could do, potentially could do that. Um, the county here just prefers to, uh, go ahead and, and send the, or go ahead and cut it off themselves, um, since they are fully equipped, um, and everyone at the shelter th there, um, is, is vaccinated, um, so that they don't have to worry about the, um, the risks of, uh, contamination.